Hello, I'm Mark Adams, President and Founder of Business Management Systems, BMS. This is our 30th year of computerizing hardware stores and lumberyards across the country. So you know, after 30 years of automating over a thousand businesses like yours, that we have the knowledge and experience to get the job done right for you. This is a demonstration of our latest product called Wave. Wave is written under Windows.net, the latest application programming language. In front of you is the desktop. The desktop is divided into two sections. The top part is the menu. Each of these tabs across the top represents a different menu for a different application. We have point of sale with its programs, inventory where the programs are available for that, accounts receivable, purchasing, different settings, different reports, and different processes. In addition to that, we have full accounting packages that are available under our legacy product. So if you need a fully integrated system, we can supply that as well. The bottom half of the screen is called a dashboard. If you have management credentials, the dashboard is a series of management reports. Each of these reports is broken into sections we call widgets. You have access to these reports that are constantly being updated from the data live that's occurring in your store. If you want to look at the information on this, you can just double click on HD Builders here and there's the customer. And I can see all the information about that customer. I can even look up their AR history for a copy of every invoice they've ever had or every item they've ever bought. And that's all available from the manager's dashboard. Now, if you don't have management credentials, then you could set up different levels according to the security level for that user. So different users could have websites on the bottom half on their dashboard. You could have different Windows programs. If it's your purchasing manager and your primary supplier, has a website for inquiring on items or for ordering that could be based basically the dashboard on his home page so it's user defined in the center of the screen is the program ribbon there's a tab for each program that's running under the bms system just like windows has icons on the bottom for the different windows programs that are running the program ribbon has a tab for each program I wanted to show you how fast it was to ring up a sale in our point of sale. So I'm going to click into point of sale. It's, it asks for each clerk to sign in with their code. I'm going to go through and do a cash sale with just two items. Scan them in. So you can see that that total is $19.45. So if I complete the ticket, the customer gives me $20 in cash gives 55 cents as their change. Now, I'm gonna pop up a PDF to show you what the ticket looked like. It would have displayed, it would have printed and kept open a cash drawer. But here's the receipt. It has your logo, it has all this center part is user defined. It lists every item showing the item number, description, price. And then at the bottom it has whatever user defined comments you want. So cash receipt, invoice, and so on. So that's point of sale. It's easy to do, it's quick, it's as fast as doing the old cash registers. I'm gonna take some time and go through it now and we'll go by field by field. For those of you that know customers' numbers, you can enter the number here, or I can look it up by name, or I can do a search where I can do any part of the name. So if I know it's Adams, I type in ADA and there's all the different Adams. Click on the one I want, part of the name. So if I know it's Adams, I type in ADA and there's all the different Adams. Click on the one I want and it pops it up for me to authorize it. Yes, that's the one that I want. It's got name and address. And it's got phone numbers different information about the account, so I'm going to verify it. Now that stops me at PO number because that customer requires a purchase order to be entered. So I'm going to say that's the Jones job. And then I'm going to go in and start ringing up items. 
I can type in the item. And populate it. I enter the item here, it enters it over there. If I know the number, I can put it in. If I scan it, it pops it up. If, it, if there's an item that I don't know the number for, but I know what it is, like a, it's a hammer drill, it'll search through and it'll tell me every item that has that. It'll actually do a search on item number, alpha code description, and UPC for to find a match for what you typed in. Once you find it, you highlight it, displays it on the screen. All right, I have a Mako knife that comes to the counter. Doesn't have a sticker on it, but I know it's Mako, so I can type that in. It'll search through, and it found only one item that has Mako in it. So I double click on that and puts it on the ticket. Now in this case, it has a note. It says this suggests the sharpener, and it has an item number. Well, if I double click on that, it'll put that item on my ticket. So it'll automatically do that. If there's an image for the customer or for that item, it will display right here. Any note about that item will display here. All right, let's say that um, sharpener is $14.89. I want to sell that for $10. I can override that by typing that in. All right. Now the system is going to keep track of that and shows that that item was overridden. The original price was $14.89. I gave a $4.89 discount on that item. So at this point I can add a comment and say sold used sharpener. So at the end of the day, it'll print a report on every item that was sold other than the suggested price. And then it'll give me the information that it was sold as used. So comments can be used on any item anywhere and as many comments as you want to put on there. Um, the bottom half of the screen where it gives the totals, that's a running total at the time. I also have the option to show the details on it so that this item, each item that I want to see, it can tell me who supplies it, what the unit of measure is, what the price was, um, the UPC code, how many are on hand, how many are ordered. Before you send somebody out to the yard to get product, I can find out if I actually have it. it tells me the date it was last sold, gives me what the alpha code was, and then here's a cost code. So this information is available by default. I can make it display that all the time, and then, or I can make it be hidden. You can also have a second screen that displays for the customer so that they can see the transaction. As you're ringing up the ticket, they can see every bit of detail on that, in which case you probably want to hide the details. So once I'm done, I can hit F12 or I can click on it. It's $194.55. I'm going to leave this a charge ticket. I'm going to close it out. And in this case, it's asking for a signature. So I'm going to put my signature on it, accept it, and now it'll go through the PDF function and display an invoice. Again, if you had a printer set up, this printing is almost instantaneous. And then once I show what that looks like, there's the invoice. Again, with your logo, user-defined information, and that's your invoice. Now invoices could be set up to automatically email to the customer or you can print a copy of it, but every invoice has a photographic copy stored in the computer so that at the end of the month, it will automatically print that charge customer's statement with every invoice, including their signature. That can be emailed, that can be printed, or you can even fax that. All right, the things that come together to make point of sale are the items and the customers. The item file is displayed here. Um, there are several different ways to look up an item. I can search by item number, description, alpha code, or UPC. In this case, I want to say, I want to look up a saw. So every item that has saw in the description has displayed. So this is every item. There's 605 items that have saw in it. 
Um, if that's good enough, I can double click on one of those and display the information about it. Or I can say handsaw, and that comes down to a smaller list. And then it displays. I can click on either one of these and look at it. The top part of this is the item number, description, weight, basically catalog information about that. What department, what tax code. All right, each one of these tabs then gives me more information about that item. If I want to see the price or cost tab, I click on this and it displays. There can be an unlimited number of different units of measure for pricing an item. For those of you with legacy systems that have price code 1, price code 2, pricing level A, B, C, you can do that here as well. So you can have pricing levels or you can do, use like our legacy system that has um, multiple units of measure. So the same item can be sold by the pound or by the foot or by the roll or case. You can have all those different units of measure here with their functions. And you may have non-discountable or discountable by unit of measure. Another tab for barcode. You could have many different UPC codes or barcodes for an item or even quick codes. This is another way of calling up an item. If I want another one, I hit add, I scan it in and it's ready. Another thing available from the barcode tab is I can print bin labels. I can print a bin label by item number, bin label with a UPC code, or a UPC code with no price. So if you have items that don't have UPC codes on them, you can print your own UPC code and put that label on it. The vendor tab shows me every vendor that supplies this item. I can have an unlimited number of vendors. Each vendor has their own individual item number for that what their unit of measure is, because you may sell it by the each and buy it by the each, but they may only sell it by the case. This is what the conversion factor is, units per case. Click this button if they require you to buy in case multiples, uh, whether the item's discontinued and any price and cost breaks that you get for buying in quantity. The stocking tab gives me all the quantity information about that item. Quantity on hand, min maxes, average usage, and so on. The lumber tab is if that item is going to be sold or, or bought by board footage, you click this and then you can calculate the board footage conversion or you can put that in. And then it'll know to use the board footage costs on our costs over here and automatically calculate that out to a per piece cost. Serial numbers. There's two different ways to use serial numbers. If you have uh, flooring where you have to keep track of each product that you have in stock by its serial number, you can list, the, list those here. That would be here. Um, if it's an item that you um, don't inventory by serial number but need to record it at the sale so that you can uh, have warranty information on that product, you can prompt at point of sale and it'll ask the clerk to enter the serial number for that item. And then it can track that forever by the serial number. Notes. There are three different kinds of notes on an item. An internal note is just for your information internally for purchasing or whatever. Point of sale is this is a note that will show up at point of sale. I have a lot of flexibility on what happens with the notes here. I can make it a different font. I can make it bold. I can even make it a different color. So I can make it blink. So if you need your employees to know something about this, you can put it here. If you want to automatically be able to link to another item, like a sell up item, I can put that item number here and then they can click on that and sell that item. Over here on the right is a note that you need to print on the invoice for that item. So if there's special handling instructions, if it's a hazmat where you're required to have certain information available, that's where that information would be. And then there's the image. If the item has an image on file, I can click on the image and show what that image is. All right, that's basically the item. Um, what our system has is I showed you the different searches, item number, description, health code, and UPC. There's also a search function. This is advanced search. So if I, I can look by several different fields, in this case, let's say this uh, by description, 
I want to look for anything that has saw in it. And I want to add a field, also a description, that says hand. So I can search through every item that has both hand and saw in the description. I can look by department, I can look by alpha code. Um, I can really do a lot of detailed searches for items at this level. I can select every one of those by clicking on it and it transfers all those to the item master screen so that I can go through these one at a time looking at each one of these hand saws until I find the one that the customer wants and then that's the one that I can select. So that's the inventory. Also the customer. Every customer can be accessed by number or name, or I can also go through the search criteria. This is the information that we store on a, on a customer. Customer's information is business address, billing address, shipping address, their home address. Um, I have all the different phone numbers. I have credit limits, the different types of customers, what their terms are, any discounts, what type of statement are they gonna get, open on, balance forward, um, on their statements, do I want new invoices, all invoices, or no invoices? Uh, what Are they taxable? If they are non-tax, here's the tax ID. Do they require, do they have a standing PO, or do they require a PO be entered? It also has all the emails for that customer. What's their business? What's their billing email? What's their home address, or email address? And a notification, if a purchase order comes in, it needs to notify them at this. And then I can print or suppress statements for different customers. Statements can be automatically emailed to the customer if I put that into their billing. So these are the different options for a customer. AR history, I showed you a little bit of that earlier. This is every invoice that customer ever had, starting with today's date and going backwards. So you see the most current invoices first. And again, if I want to select that, and email it, that invoice has been emailed to that address. I can collect them all, I can print a copy of the statement, I can send that, I can do a quick transaction search for anything in point of sale. And purchase history is every item that customer ever bought, so I can go back and see what he paid for it, if he wants to return it, or if he says, I need another one of the same thing you delivered last week, I can go back through and see all that. You have notes available for customers. This is for your internal purposes. Um, it does come up at point of sale. You saw that earlier. Uh, if you need the customers, or your clerks, to ask something, you can put that in there and it'll pop up next time that customer comes in. Uh, we have a customer that got audited by the tax authority and they have to monitor the tax certificates. So they put in comments for every non-taxable customer what the date is of their certificate on file so they know to ask. Subaccounts. Subaccounts is either ship to locations or true subaccounts, job sites or whatever that you need to track separately for this customer. So you can have a subaccount set up and get a statement of just what they buy. And subaccounts can have their own addresses, they can even have their own email addresses and they could be taxed differently than what the uh, normal customer is. So that's the information for customer. Again, I can jump back and forth between items, customers, invoices, and all. Now, let's say I want to go in and do a quote for a customer. I click on quote, I put my code in, and then it really works just like point of sale. At this point, I'm going to do that Adams Builders And uh, I didn't have a sub account. Let's see if I have anything in there. No, but I'm going to go ahead and set this up. This is going to be Smith Job. Okay, and I can put the address, anything I want in there, any notes about how to get there, anything else that I want to put on there. If this customer, if Adams Builders had a list of sub accounts, I could just pick one off the list. But in this case, we're going to set one up. All right, and then this 
I'm going to go ahead and say that something about this, we say that was the Jones account. And now I know, here's where I set up the information. The default for the description is the quote number that it was assigned and the date. But I can do anything else I want. I can say this is the Jones home lot 27. All right, and then here's the other information that was available to me at the beginning. Um, if the date it was entered, I can set up a promise date. Say I, I'm promising to have this to end by Friday. It's going to expire in July. I'm going to say one month from today, 21st. Um, this is the date that it arrived. If, if you had any special. Um, special product that was ordered for that and the date that you contacted him about that product coming in. There's the tax code, promise date, or status code. Is it um, just entered? Has it been verified? Has it been accepted? Uh, what kind of pricing is this? Floating, fixed, which cost method? Because if you're going to calculate the prices based on your cost, you can use standard average or last cost. Standard being like the market cost. And then you can use a pricing contract or you can just come and do your pricing as you go. So I can do, is it if it's to be delivered, I click on that because it will use the tax code that's set up for the delivery site. Any other notes I need to put in here about this quote, I can do it right there. Otherwise, I'm ready to start building it. All right, I know that this customer is going to need 100 two by four. And I know he's going to need, I don't know, I can scan some items in. I can type in a description. I have all the same capabilities that I had with them um, at point of sale. I can put in any item that has nail, a nail gun. Let's see if there's an item in for that. There we go. All right, so basically, I'm just keying in a list of items for this quote. All right, at the bottom of it, I can come back then and say, give me a recap. And the recap takes all those items that were on this quote, and it recapped them by department, showing me what the price was when I quoted it, what the cost was when I entered it, and what the margin was for those items. Now, if this customer comes back three months from now, I can come back and do the recap and it will update that with the current costs and what those current margins are based on what our costs are today as opposed to before. And I can reprice that quote using those same original margins. All right, when I get done with this quote then, let's say I'm gonna email it. And then all I have to do is enter the email address and they'll send it out. If I had that email set up ahead of time, it would have gone. See, it's it was set up to go to Mark at BMS. And there's everything I need. Hit send, and that email's gone. I could print a copy of it, or I can go through and search to see if there's any other quotes that are out there. So that's quotes. Orders, basically they work the same way, except orders are relieving inventory and reserving inventory as I go, bring them items up. Once I complete the order, it reserves every item on that, and that gets factored into my quantity on hand when I go to purchase. So purchase orders, I can create purchase orders through suggested orders based on min-max levels and other criteria. I can create it from a purchase order. So if a customer wants to email me a list of items and quantities, I can import that and create a purchase order from that. I can create it manually by just keying in quantity and item numbers, or I can also create an order from a POS invoice. So if you have items that were special order items on an order, I can create a purchase order from that. So suggested orders, I can come down here and I'm gonna pick a supplier 
and then I can pick a given department or I can say all departments by not selecting anything. I can choose order points for creating the suggested order or I could just say show, show me every item I've sold since a given date. You pick the date and any item that you sold will be pulled up on an order that you get to audit before you place the order. So we've had customers in the past that said, I really like my stocking level at the store. If it does nothing but order me back to where I am today, I'll be happy. You can do that. Pick the, since the last date of my order, anything that was sold comes up on a purchase order. But in this case, I want to use my order points. And then I hit display. It looks through every item in the inventory and it has created a purchase order for this supplier of these items. Right, and it's a grid. I can just go through and change the quantities. I can click through it, or I can look at it and say, well, gee, why did it say that I need to order 105? If I highlight over that, this gives me all the information about the item. If I highlight on the vendor item, it gives me all the information about the vendor. Any special quantity breaks that he gives, it tells me how he requires that you purchase. Um, if I go to the item description or the price, it gives me that information. I paid $17.60 on the average. It says that's what my standard cost is. That's what I'm expecting to pay. It gives me all my pricing information. And then I come over to the order quantity and it says, there's my stock, maximum stock, order point, order quantity, and everything that it used to make the decision to give me this suggestion. So I can go through there and say, well, I don't want to order these. I can just go through and delete those. And then I can say, generate a purchase order with what's left. Or I can go through and make whatever changes I want to make to it. The nice thing is that this is done in a grid, just like a spreadsheet. I want only 300 of that item. And then I want to go to this one and say, I only want 65 of that item. And once I make my changes, I generate a purchase order and then track it from there. That's your purchasing. Some different reports, uh, point of sale reports, you have your cash drawer recap, you have your point of sale register. Um, the point of sale register is unique. Um, we really wanted a way to, to drill down into your point of sale to get the different information that you need in that. I can select any given customer for a day. These are all the customers that I had sales for today. I can just look at a given customer. I could look at all. Um, I can give a beginning date and an ending date. So I can do this for the whole month. I can do just one workstation or I can do all workstations. And then every type of transaction is available. Cash, AR charge, checks. I can see what payments were made on account, um, any credit cards. I can also go through and unselect, and let's say I only want to get a list of what my quotes were for the day. So I have basically a quote register by just clicking on quotes. Do that, and it's just going to show me that one quote that I made. Or I can come back and say, I want to see all the invoices. I want to sell cash, charge, checks, credit cards, and that's it. Show me those and there's every point of sale transaction that I had. So I can print that, I can email it, I can store it as a PDF, I can do a lot of different things with that. Anything that was sold as miscellaneous is available as well. So miscellaneous items, I didn't show that at point of sale, but it allows you to just key in the description and the price. It's an item that I don't have on hand, it's not a valid item, or I just don't want to hold up the customer at the end of the day, it prints a list of all those so that you can go find out if I really do need to set that item up. I wanted to show you accounts receivable too because something that's really different with this system is applying payments. Um, there's a couple of different options. Um, in this case, we're going to go through and select a customer that sent us a check. I know I can do it by customer number. I displayed these are all the invoices that that customer owes us and they already have a payment on of $300 so their balance is $680 so I'm gonna enter a payment 
by check, the amount's going to be $180. And it's check number 1234. Now I can do this with credit. I can do it with credit cards. It'll automatically do the credit card authorization and send it straight through. Once I save that payment, I can print a receipt. So if the customer standing there wants a copy of it, I can print a receipt for it. Then I come back, I've entered it. Now I want to do an easy pay. And it's going to take that previous $300 plus the 180 I made. And you can see it automatically paid the oldest invoice first until it used up the payment. And it has this reference over here. It will go back to refer to the ticket that I actually received so that I can always know what invoices were paid by what check. And it used it up until it used the last $2.60, only partially paying that invoice. Now I can go through and change any one of those and take, say, I don't want to apply that there. I'm going to put it against this one and I'm going to write off the difference. I can go through and apply specific credit memos if I wanted to do it the same way. But in this case, it took the credit memos and the invoice. See the credit memo number there and my payments and process them for me. So that's called the easy pay. You can go through and define, I want this item to pay this invoice and so on. For those customers of yours that they itemize each invoice being paid on your check, you can do it the same way or you can just do easy pay. And then I can come back through and do my accounts receivable report. And it'll show me all that accounts receivable that I just put through. Any payments, credit memos, service charges, whatever. So that is a summary, a quick overview of what the WAVE point of sale system is from BMS. Give us a call. We'd love to come out and see you. We'd love to do a demo over the internet. You can get more detail. Um, come by and see us at the shows. We hope we get a chance to work with you. We're having a lot of fun with this product and uh, we know it'll work for you. Thank you.